Hello everyone. Welcome once again to my platform. Uh, if you are here and you are yet to subscribe to my channel, I, I, I beg you to do so. You are not paying for it. It's just a way of telling YouTube that you love what I'm doing. So please just uh, subscribe and like the video if actually you love what you are seeing. Just subscribe and like the video. It's a way of encouraging me as well. It helps me, it helps me to put in more to what I'm doing. And this channel is here to help those that need to uh, improve in the work of their hands. And I'm actually trying my best to make sure that whatever I'm doing and whatever video I'm posting, people do understand it. Yes. So this day, I will be talking about uh, this uh, auto gele that you are seeing right here. And it is made out of Ankara. So quickly to the table. To show you the things that I actually did to make that uh, this Ankara stand the way it, it, it is standing there now. So first of all, I started by uh, opening this material and then placing in between it. Uh, uh, this is a color stay. Color. You know, we have different type of uh, stay that we use for clothes. As you see, the material is very soft. But after adding this color stay to it, it becomes very strong. There, there are so many type of stay out there. But if you really want it as strong as what you are seeing on this very video now, it is color stay that you are. I'm advice. I'm advising you to use color stay. Color. What they put in the color of a dress. Yeah. So I use the color stay. I am really, really uh, applying this heat as much as possible. If you have a heat transfer machine, I think you can use it because using iron will actually take time. But even though it will take time, I advise that you dedicate the time to it. It's very necessary. Yes. So I use the color stay, stick it to the material. I open the part of it out so that by the time I'm done sticking it, I can fold that part. I can use that part to cover it because it's not advisable that you open it down. So you use the part there to cover it, just as you see me doing now. So after covering it, what I will do is, all right, while I was placing the color stay, I decided because they are, the material have some kind of pattern, I decided I wanted this uh, yellow type, the yellow on the top, on the edge. So that was the reason I measured it and actually placed it where, when I fold it, the yellow will be at the top. So I'm going to sew two inches on the top there with my machine. And then underneath uh, the, the end of the color stay, I will also sew it. This is to ensure complete neatness. And then the two inches I'm sewing at the top is to make sure that the material actually sits. You understand? You cannot just put it and leave it like that and be working with it. It will start bouncing out. But when you sew it, it becomes part of the material. So this is how strong it will look after you've uh, finished uh, uh, working with it you see how strong it's looking there so after which i will prepare for the base though i did not make the the video of the base i have so many videos on how to make auto gele base so i did not make video on this one so what i will do is just to measure uh, about 20 inches from the material that 20 inches i will cut it out i'll cut it out and then uh, I'll sew it also to make the base. So I did not make that video. So this is the part where I have already gone the color stay. I'm only making sure that the under of it is neat. So that's why I'm aiming it right now to make sure that it is neat because there will be no chance for you to start uh, uh, working on it after making the gilly. So you better finish every form of neatness you need before you start making the gilly. So after folding it now, folding it very well, you see how it is. So I'm not going to talk about the measurement because I know some person will be like, ah, what's the measurement, what's the measurement? So uh, the measurement, the length, the length for this uh, material I'm using now is 47. The length is 47. So I'm using a length of 47. This will be long enough to make a complete round uh, fan. So I'm using 47, yeah, 47. 
Then uh, the wideness, which is the width, uh, is about uh, seven and quarter. The wideness of this material. I actually intended uh, making about uh, six and a half, but somehow it fell into seven and quarter. I can use it, but it will almost like be too big if you are just learning. So if you are a learner, please do not use seven and quarter. Use between six and six and a half. That is the perfect size for it. But for me, I will be able to fold it down and make sure that it's not too big. Yes. So straight away, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to start uh, folding the the gele. So like I always say, whenever I want to make uh, my gele, I base the head of the dummy with a pinnable material. So this is the material that uh, this is the Ankara material for the auto gele. So I'm just going to use it to work with it. So the first thing is to create a slant to start with. So from that edge, just like a triangle, as you see me folding now. You fold it out and then start to pin it to uh, the base that is attached to the dummy's head. So you start to pin it to the base. Very important. If you do not start by slanting it, uh, the, the, this uh, gele will not come out as, as uh, gele. It will, it will come out as gele dough, but it, this style will not come out. You understand? It's going to give you uh, a different style completely that you might not really like. So you start by slanting it. So when you pin, pin it to the dummy, it is expected that when you are done, when you are through with all the pinning, you will carefully uh, use your needle and thread to sew it. You understand? You will carefully use your needle and thread to sew it. So, but first of all, you need to bring out the style. Yes. So, but if you know it's convenient for you, to be folding at every fold you, you want to stitch. It's not a bad idea, you understand? You can fold and stitch, but uh, I think what might be wrong with it is when you find out you did not uh, land the gele well, you did not do it well, you need to start losing. But if you use pin to start it and you find out that, no, this thing is too big or I'm not too comfortable with uh, the result of what I have just done, you can as well uh, remove your pins easily and repeat the process. So that's the reason now I actually encourage uh, pin. I encourage pin instead of sewing it directly. I do the pinning when I'm done. I look at it and I see that, okay, I'm very okay. Then I will start to stitch it. But if not, I have to repeat the process. So you can see what I am doing now, just folding this uh, gele carefully. And every fold that I'm taking under, that is the small, uh, the, the part that is resting on the base will be smaller than the part that is going to open. So that is a way of slanting it, you understand? And then again, another very important thing that will make this tie come out is that every one that you are taking should land like almost in the same position with the previous one. So don't allow the, the, the one you are doing right now to be bigger than the previous one. Uh, you just like try to, to see that you are accurate with whatever you are folding. You just try to see that you might not just be like 100% accurate, but if you give it your time and you have the taste of what you want in your, in your art, you will know exactly what to do. You understand? So if by the time you are folding, you allow some to come forward than the previous one, this gele now, this uh, for the flying you are seeing, will not, the steps, or the pleats will not be able to stand the way it is standing. You will see that some is behind, some is forward, and it will not be uniform. So as much as possible, you try to fold it in a way that every one of them will almost be on the same uh, line and not really uh, pushing out too much because by the time you are done with it and you want to sew it with uh, your needle and thread, it might give you a challenge if some of them are coming out too much. And by the time you are concluding the gele, if you don't take care, it will just you will just see the edges very rough on it. So as much as possible, just make sure that you are placing it like it's a completely tied gele. You understand? People don't need to see this thing that I'm folding now. People don't need so as much as possible. I try to hide it and make it uniform. 
Uh-huh. Okay. So I do hope you are following and you enjoy what you are seeing. So you can see how the, the outcome is looking now. The the Okay, so this is how it will look. This is how it will look, even to the end. This is how it will look. So, uh, and you see the top, you see the top uh, is, uh, it has a unique look because of the pattern I arranged to make sure that the yellow part, uh, the yellow part of it is what is uh, uh, standing. The yellow part should be on the top, you understand? So. Is actually making it very unique and making the look very very uh, okay uh, so when you are working sometimes it's good that you look at the pattern you have and think of what best you can achieve with it you understand yeah so if you are doing your work you just need to be outstanding in it so you just need to be creative in whatever you are doing just come up with ideas that you think can work uh, so that is what I did, and I saw that it's actually working. It's so beautiful. I love it. I love it. I do hope you love it too. Okay, once again, if you have any questions or comments, please, any complaint, any question, just drop it on the comment section as much as possible. I'm actually trying my best to answer your questions. I do try my best to answer your questions. If I have never answered yours before, please, I'm sorry. But I know that whenever I see comments, I go to answer them. So this is just how it will look. And you see how I believe you love it. You love the outcome. You see how it's looking. You see how beautiful the outcome is. So it's beautiful. I love it. So after doing this, like I said before, we'll just use our needle and thread. And step by step, every part that we pin there, that is the working needle, you need to sew it. Eh? Step by step, every part there, you sew it. So right now, I am done with it. And you see, this is the back part of the auto gilly. This is the back part of the auto gilly. Yes, and you see that the back is beautiful as well. I love the I love one thing. Whatever I am doing, I try as much as possible to make sure that both the back and the front speaks. You understand? It should be something that when people see it from the back, they love it. When they see it from the front, they should love it as well. You understand? So making your back and front to be you see that the back is well arranged. In short, even at a point I was like confused. What should I use? You understand? Should I just turn the because putting the back at the front was so so beautiful. Putting the front there was in short, I was even confused. I was thinking, should I like change it uh to this to the to the uh front and all that? So it's very good that you put in your best to make sure that both the back and the front panel is okay. Yes. All right. So straight away, I will move to uh, stitching it, and I will show you how I am doing it. I actually wanted to do that off camera, but I just felt some persons might have the need to, to see it. So I did not really show the complete uh, uh, part. I just did some part of it for, for those that want to see how I stitch it. So I just showed some part of it. Eh? So it's not like a, a complete from number one of of the pleats to the end. No, 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 no. So just watch as I as I uh, sew it, as I sew it. So I'm just going to explain the steps of the sewing. Um, so you know every part where you remove your pin, when you remove your pin, just lap the second one on it. And make sure it's covering so you attach the part where you have removed the pin to the second one eh, that should lap it 
under everything that you are doing you know like your movement of trade to make sure like you give distance to the next one all should be under under the gele don't do any movement on top because when you do any movement on top your work will be rough so every movement you need to do while you are doing this now should be done under the gele under so all your movement remember we have not fixed it so when you are doing it now you remove the pin when you remove the pin use the next one to it to lap it yes remove the pin from that one as well so when you lap it the first thing you will do is to stitch the first one you remove the pin from uh, to the next one that you have used to lap it now first then remember where you used to lap it now still have its own edge too so you will use the next one to the one you used to lap it now to lap that one too and then stitch it until you get to the end that's just this the process it will come out very very neat it will come out very very neat so like i said i did this process for those persons that will actually need to understand what i did so you can see that i'm lapping the next one now uh, with the this one with it so when i lap it i'll just attach it to it so you don't really need to like pack five ten together to stitch so i'm done with the stitching like i said before you can see the back now see how beautiful it is so even if i'm using the back as the front nobody will know that ah, this is meant to be the, the back of the gele the back came out so beautiful and you can see what i've stitched nothing can scatter it anymore use it to stone ground or do anything with it to try to there's not like the gele for the thing now scatter no nothing like that you can see how strong it is so though because i've prepared that part as the front i'll just use it as the front so the next thing i'll do now is just simply uh stitching uh stitching it to the base this is the base i said i did the base of camera because i have a lot of videos on the base i did not see any reason to repeat it so that's the reason i did not do that so i'm just going to uh, place the uh the front to it and then stitch it this is still the back like i said before i was confused but i decided no let me just go for my original plan you understand so this is it and i i, I am just going to uh, stitch it uh, with needle and thread again the process has to be a careful process you have to be very careful as you are doing it is a careful process all right once again if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please do so you are just telling youtube that you love what i am doing and you are using it to encourage me the more i see subscribers the more i am uh uh what do i say now the more i am moved to like make a uh, better videos for my viewers you know this is my own channel support me subscribe and just you know Press the like uh, uh, button there and let me see oh, how many people really like this thing. You understand? Please. Thank you very much. So when you are going to sew it, this is what you do. From that, yes, you come down to the edge. Yes, to the edge. You can fix the back uh, completely, but this front, is not. the edges are not meant to be so. So you can see the way I drew the shock. That is how the landing should be. Your landing should be so even when you are fixing the middle and you are using the complete pleat there's no problem but when you are landing the landing should be in a way that is like a C eh? a C form your landing should be in a C form should be in a C form that's the only way you can see the beauty of the gele if you just go uh, in, or, or through the back and you just go from end to end the gele used to look like, um, I don't know, but you cannot see the beauty of it. So your landing should be in a C form, a C form landing. That is how you fix it. So again, like I said, I actually love, uh, I pin my work before I go ahead uh, to stitch. I pin my work because I want it to be in place. I want to look at it and see that I am satisfied with it. Then I can go ahead to do the finishing. I don't want to do my finishing and then go back to start losing. I don't like it that way. So I do the finishing and then I do the pinning and look at it and see that I'm very satisfied. Then I go ahead and do the finishing. Like I said, this video is a little bit long. I am sorry. 
it is for your is for the good of those that need to understand what I am doing. I wanted to make it into two, but I just felt let me just make it one. I, I can split it to say part one and part two, but I say no, let me make it uh, one so that in one video you can just get everything to the end. Don't uh, 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 get tired of washing it if you know you are a beginner. Wash it and wash it again and again. Uh, and then use something and practice it. Then when you now have any problem, any challenge, then you can write on the comment uh, section what your challenges are. I will respond to it. I will respond to it. As many that have subscribed to this channel, I've taken it upon myself to make sure that what you are here to learn, you are able to learn it. The, the other time I dropped my WhatsApp number because I want you to send your work to me. I want to see it and make corrections. But though nobody sent to me, I want to believe that that implies that you understood what you are doing very well. So you can see the pinning. After the pinning, I'm just going to sew. Uh, and I do hope you enjoy this tutorial. That will be all for today. If you love it, please just give it a thumbs up uh, as a way of saying you love it. And then you can also subscribe if you are yet to do that. So this is just it. I did not make video on attaching the handle. I think I have a video on that. So this is just it. You can see how beautiful it's looking. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. I will come up with better ones next time. See you in my next video. Bye for now. Bye. I love you.